Hey guys, this is MacHeads101 with another iPhone programming tutorial. In this video, I'm going to be both reviewing uh, last tutorial's challenge, which I'll go over in a second, and I'm going to be showing you how to open a URL when the user presses on a button. So the challenge from the previous tutorial was to make a segmented control with code without using any interface builder. So I'm just going to be showing you how to do this uh, quickly. We're not going to be recreating our project completely from last tutorial, but uh, I am going to be creating this segmented controller with code just so you can see how it works. So in Xcode, we're going to create a new project, or you can use the existing one if you still have it. And I'll call it segment with code. All right. It's going to come up. I'm going to declare a UI segmented control. Control. And I'm going to make a void control changed. All right. Now I'll go into the implementation. Put this right here. And in our view did load, like normal, we're going to be creating our control. So we're going to say control equals UI segmented alloc init with items. Now items it takes an array of strings. Um, so we're just going to create an array. So we'll call it my items. And now up here we're going to declare my items. So we'll say my items equals NS array, array with objects. All right. And these are going to be first, second, third. And then after all of those, you put nil to terminate the sequence. Um, so first, comma, second, comma, third, comma, nil. All right. So we're giving it my items. Now we have to give it a frame. So we'll say control set frame CG rect make 10 10 self dot view dot frame dot size dot width minus uh, 20 and then the height will say control dot frame dot size dot height. Uh, the reason I'm doing this right here is because segmented controls look better at a certain height than pretty much any other height and when you create them like this they'll have a default frame that has this height. So we'll just keep this height from its old frame so that way it'll have the right height and it looks nice. Now we're going to say control set selected segment index 0. This just selects something by default. And then control add target self action selector. We're going to give it control changed. This is our method name as we look up here this is the method name um, and then for control events UI control event value changed this means that this method will get called whenever the value is changed of the controller uh, this is pretty pretty much always what you'll use for a segmented control uh, and you'll pretty much never use it for a button or anything like that so now we have to take the final step and add the controller to our view. So self.view, add subview, control. Now let's review what this does real quick and let me just resize this so you can see all of the code at once. So first we're creating an array with all of the titles that we want to have on our button. Uh, these are ns strings which can be denoted with the at sign and then the quotes. Uh, so they're separated by commas and then at the end there's a nil to terminate the sequence. This creates a new segmented control with those items. Now when it's created it has no idea where on the screen it needs to be it just knows how tall it wants to be but it doesn't know how wide it needs to be or where it needs to be. So this gives it its x coordinates from the top left and its y coordinates from the top left. This gives it the width of the entire view minus 20. Now we're making it minus 20 because we want it to be the width of the view uh, but we're, there's a 10 pixel padding on either side, so we subtract 20. Uh, and then we give it its original height. Then we select the default uh, item. This will be the first one because it's 0. We set up our event and then we add it. And our event will have an NS log item changed. Uh, and obviously you can plug in the code here that we had in our previous tutorial. So if we run this, um,
we will see that our segmented control is on the screen and it changes. We get a little message in our console whenever it changes, as you can see. So that is the segmented controller with code. Now time for the topic of this tutorial that I want to cover. A lot of people have asked me in the past how to make it so when the user clicks on a button or a link in the app, it opens that URL in Safari. And the answer to this is actually very simple because Apple already has an API to do this in one or two lines of code. So let's go into Xcode and create a new, a new project. And I will call this open URL. All right. So this is just going to be a really simple view with one button. All right, when they hit the button, it'll open a URL in Mobile Safari. So let's open up the View Controller in Interface Builder. Okay. All right. So here it is. Now, let's drag on a button. And I'll just make this button say, Go to Google. All right. And this button is going to make us open Google in, the, in, the, uh, in Safari. So now let's go to open URL view controller and declare IB action go to URL ID sender and we'll go into the implementation and throw this in there. Now let's go back into interface builder and hook up this button so we'll hold control click down on this drag it to files owner say go to URL and now we'll save in interface builder and we will quit all right so now here's the actual code that will get called when they hit the button and we're gonna make this just open a URL in Safari so first of all we'll make a URL object and so we'll say my URL equals NS URL URL with string and then here in the quotes we'll put the URL in this case it's Google so HTTP colon slash slash www.google.com. All right. Now we have to open this. So we're going to have two left brackets and say UI application, shared application, open URL, and give it my URL. Now, this is pretty simple. You probably understand what this code is doing. But NS URL is an actual class it's a type of object that represents a web URL a string such as this is not a URL it's just a piece of text that means nothing well it means something but it doesn't mean that it's a web address so in order to get it into a URL object we use the URL with string method on the um, on the NS URL class so that gives us a URL we're storing it into the variable my URL now Every app has a shared application object, which lets you do various tasks like set a badge number, um, set like progress indicators, set the orientation of your app, and it also happens to be able to open a URL. And it'll open the URL normally in Safari. Uh, you can have a URL that links to an email address, and it'll open in Mail, uh, stuff like that. So let's go ahead and run this in the iPhone simulator. All right, so here's our app. We click on go to URL, and it opens right up in Safari. So here you can see here's Google's homepage. We can go back to our app, whatever. And here's our app. Um, so that's how to do it. It's pretty simple. Uh, pretty much anyone can do it. It doesn't take much. It's, it's literally two lines of code. You can make it into one line of code. Let me show you how to do that. Uh, so this is just a shortcut. If you don't want to have to declare this variable, you can just copy this and throw it here and then get rid of this and now it does the same thing uh, if I just build it to prove it to you that it works um, it does the same thing except that it's one line of code so that is how uh, to open a URL from an iPhone app in Safari so thanks for watching MacHeads101 subscribe and goodbye